Hi everyone, welcome to Organizing Higher. We provide tips and resources to help you be more productive and organized so you can focus on what matters most. The topic of today's video is going to be email, but more specifically, email workflow. Do you ever find yourself feeling overwhelmed by email as you open your inbox and just looking at everything that you have to do? It's overwhelming. Maybe there's 2,000 emails in your inbox. First, if you haven't already, make sure you check out my other video about email management. But once you have all of that, then what do you do? You wanna have an email workflow system. Your email workflow is essentially the process that you use when you are going through your emails. We're gonna to talk today about my email workflow, and hopefully it'll give you some ideas for how you can tweak your workflow as well. The important piece at the end of the day is I wanna make sure that I am in control of my email so my email is not controlling me. So if you're having some trouble staying on top of emails and you wanna tighten up your email workflow or create one, stay tuned. My workflow is based on the GTD getting things done methodology from David Allen that's really popular. I'll do a separate video about using the GTD methodology and how I use it with my to-do list and my general workflow. In my email situation, I generally only have four things that I do with every single email. The first option is delete, which is pretty rare. Usually I archive things. I talk about why I archive versus delete in my Gmail video. Sometimes I will defer something. It essentially means I don't need this email right now, but I might need to reference it in a couple of days. I wanna have it close nearby. Delegate which is what it sounds like. When you do delegate, you do wanna have some way to capture things that you've sent out. So I have my follow-up folder and that's what I use that for. And I'll talk in a bit about how I use that follow-up folder to make sure that I don't forget about those carrier pigeons that I've sent out. If something takes me less than two minutes to do, I just do it in the moment. But if it's gonna take me more than two minutes to do, that's when I use my action folder. Anything that's in my action folder, as I talked about in another video, it's what I see first when I open Outlook. So I'll process my action emails first thing. So as I find myself ready to sit down and review my emails, as I'm looking through my email, I only have to look through six folders. And the folders you can see are on the left. So anytime I'm ready to start my email process, this is what I do. I have it sorted so that I have the most recently received email at the top but I actually start from the bottom. So I review the oldest email first. This email is asking me to do something that's a bit complex, which is finding meeting time. Finding a time to meet can be a perpetual game of ping pong. I'll do a video later on how I managed to keep that activity to a minimum using a tool that I found. But in this case, this email is asking me to find a time to meet with this person. I don't necessarily need this email to do that. I could copy the contents of this email. I could look at that information and create a task on my to-do list called schedule a meeting time with this person. And then I would just send them the meeting request via Outlook. So once I've decided I don't actually need this email, I can actually just archive it. The next email is essentially a receipt. I sent in a work order to our IT department, and this is an automated receipt essentially saying that they have received my request. I really don't need this email, it's a receipt, so I usually archive things like this. So I'm gonna process the rest of my emails in the exact same way. So now my inbox is all clear. The next thing I do is just move down the line. The next folder is my action folder. I look and see what items are there that I need to address. In most cases, I find with this process, if I only have a couple of emails, I can usually do everything that I need to do within about 15 or 20 minutes. This is because I have started my workflow process and stayed on top of it. This is very hard to do if you are not in front of your emails, if you're constantly playing catch up. So it's gonna take you some time to get to the point where you have this amount. And I know what you're thinking, oh, I get so many more emails than that. And maybe you do, but the process is still the same. I have definitely had instances where I would have maybe 150 emails that I would get in one day. And I was able to do this exact same process and at the end of the day I would have zero emails in my inbox. If you have more than 150 you might decide to delegate more often than I did or you might decide to have more rules set up than I did but the process that you would take can still ultimately be the same. For my read review folder, I rarely keep things in here for very long. Sometimes there are articles that I wanna read. I have newsletters that I get. The incubate folder is usually things that I'm waiting on that support
support a project that I'm already working on. So a lot of times I don't necessarily need to do anything with this particular folder, except just quickly glance and see what's still in here. And that reminds me what projects I still have outstanding. The follow-up folder are those carrier pigeons that I've sent out. And this is my opportunity to just remind myself, oh yeah, I asked that person for that thing and they haven't gotten back to me yet. The way that I have something land in here in my follow-up folder automatically is I've set up a rule and I'll do another video later on how I use rules to manage my inbox. And then of course the archive folder, which is everything that I archive. It's really easy to search for things in this folder if I did need to find something and I haven't had any trouble with things getting lost. So whether your goal is inbox zero or not, ultimately the goal I think for everyone is to stay on top of your emails and to not let your emails start to control you and to not be overwhelmed by the amount of emails that you have. Having a system, having a process that you can do, you'll get to the point where you're able to mindlessly go through the process of reviewing your email and it kind of becomes like you're on autopilot and you can find yourself in a flow state. So now that you have an email workflow system that you can consider, Look at your email workflow and see where you can make some tweaks or additions or just where to start. Having a workflow, having a process for how you go through your emails is really what helps you to stay in control of your emails so that they don't control you. An email workflow is really based on having your inbox under control in the first place. So make sure you check out my other video about how you can manage your inbox, either in Gmail or in Outlook. That way you minimize the number of emails that land in your inbox in the first place. Having an email workflow is gonna be really important for a touch once policy, which is the idea that once you've opened an email and looked at it, you wanna decide in that moment what to do with it. You don't wanna open it and then close it and then open it again later and then close it and then open it again after that. You're gonna spend a lot of time and lose a lot of time if that's your process. So with an email workflow process, you're gonna to touch it once, you're gonna look at the email, decide what to do with it and address it in that moment. Having an email workflow is also great because it allows you to get interrupted. I don't know about you, but now that I'm working from home, I still get interrupted, even if I'm not in the office. If it's my cat, or there's someone at the door, or it's my kid, there's still interruptions that are happening when we're processing our emails. And so having a process that we can go back to really helps us to overcome those distractions that sometimes make us lose our focus. So having an email workflow process that's really reliable can help you to manage those disruptions without losing your focus. And keep in mind when it comes to email workflow, it's about progress, not perfection. Maybe you've realized you don't have an email workflow system and that's okay. This is just something to help you get started. So try one thing, one small thing, one small change and see if that makes a difference. If all that you do differently is process your email in batches, meaning that you take that particular task of checking your email and that's all you do for a set time period, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even if that's the only thing that you gather from watching this video, that's great because that's getting you a step closer to getting more in control of your email. So be kind to yourself as you're going through this journey of increasing your organization and productivity. Know a friend or colleague who's feeling overwhelmed with email too? Share this video with them and hopefully they can get some tips from it as well. Thanks for watching.